Good morning, Facebook Live fans. I'm Jack Newby, Executive Director here at the Jocelyn Center. Um, welcome to uh, our Friday interview show, um, which is also a podcast and posted on our YouTube channel, so you can watch it anytime you want. Our YouTube channel is Jocelyn Television. Before we get into our interview, just want to cover a few things that are coming up at the Jocelyn Center and a few of our programs. Um, one is called Mindful Living with Elise, uh, and that's on Tuesdays from 9 to 9.45 on Zoom. And if you'd like to register for that program, you just go to our uh, website at jocelyncenter.org, look at programs, and then virtual programs, put in your email address, and you'll be given uh, information on how you can log into all of our virtual programs. Um, also, we have coming up in our Wellness Center, our Aging Mastery Program. Uh, that's coming up on Ju in June, June 14th, 16th, 21st, 23rd, and 28th. Uh, and that's going to be on Zoom. So uh, you can do it from the comfort of your home. Uh, and that's a way to learn about positive aging and how to address certain things as we get older, such as sleep or financial planning and financial health or relationship issues, whether it's with your family or friends or making new friends. Uh, so it's a great program. Uh, and it was uh, designed by the National Council on Aging. We also have Brain Boot Camp coming up. Uh, that's on May 18th and 25th. So that's coming up very soon. Uh, and you can uh, register for that by calling 760-340-3220, extension 117. Uh, and Jose will be happy to uh, register you for that class. Uh, it's a great class that was developed by the UCLA Longevity Center. Um, and so, uh, talks about brain health, how to keep your brain healthy and give you uh, tips and ideas on how to improve your memory and especially with names. Uh, so that's a great class. Um, also coming up is our emergency preparedness seminar. And that's on Monday, May 23rd uh, from 12 to noon and we are serving lunch. Uh, you need to RSVP for that and get on the list uh, because you will not only receive information from experts about emergency preparedness, um, but also get a free emergency preparedness kit. So you can uh, RSVP by calling the Jocelyn Center at 760-340-3220. Uh, and then coming up that same week uh, on Wednesday, May 25th is our Spring Health and Wellness Fair. Um, and we are uh, we have vendors, we'll have a fitness class demonstration, uh, adult sleep and health lectures, um, how to care, early heart attack care, how to recognize it and to uh, seek treatment, blood pressure screening. And also if you need a COVID vaccination or uh, booster, uh, Jocelyn is the place to come for that on May 25th for our health fair. So this is Interview Friday, and we have a, a great guest this morning. He teaches uh, meditation at our uh, at, here at the Jocelyn Center, Glendon Geeky. Um, and I want to welcome Glendon to the to Interview Friday. Thank you, Jack. It's great to be here. Great to see you. Um, happy Friday. And happy Friday to you. <laughs> so. Tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved in, in meditation. Sure. Uh, before I retired, I was a psychotherapist and mediator and uh, did that for a long time. And at some point during that career, I heard about meditation. It was, it was a new thing. It, it's all over the news these days. And we hear a lot about meditation, but 50 years ago, uh, Meditation was not really in the mainstream. And so I went to this workshop. Uh, this woman had uh, produced a book. I think she called it Freedom to Meditate. Uh, and went to that workshop, learned from her about meditation. And since then, have uh, found out more about meditation and different types of meditation and tried to practice it. Some, sometimes uh, I don't. Uh, but try to be as faithful as I can to meditation. So there are some kind of myths and maybe myth misunderstandings about meditation. Um, people think they have to sit on the floor with their legs crossed and, and that sort of thing. So, so tell us a little bit about you know, some of those myths and what the reality is. Sure. 
uh, first of all, the big myth is that it's some type of a religious connection to meditation. Uh, and religion, re uh, meditation really is not connected to any particular religion. Uh, often we think about uh, meditation in Buddhism because Buddhism involves meditation. But if you think about, uh, if you went to a monastery and the brothers were saying their morning prayers, they say it in a way, a very meditative, calming way. Or uh, if you're Catholic and you say the rosary, that's a way of meditating. Uh, saying those rosary, even if you, if you say it in a group, it's a group meditation to say the rosary. So uh, meditation has been around a long time. It just hasn't been called that. And there are certain meditations where they like you to cer sit certain ways, but there really is no specific way. You can uh, meditate laying down. Uh, there's a walking meditation. Uh, so that you're up and moving while you're med meditating. Uh, so you can be, you just want to be comfortable, however you are. Uh, if you're sitting, to have your feet on the ground or on the floor so that you're grounded uh, to the earth. Uh, but you just want to be comfortable, alert, but comfortable. Uh, so there's no, no rules about how to sit, how to lay, how to be. So people wonder whether if they're meditating, is there a right way to, to do meditation? Is mm -hmm. there you know, a right way and a wrong way? And I think a lot of times we think of those terms. Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, well, if you think about yourself, uh, have you ever sat on the couch in your home and just looked out the window, maybe watched the birds or watch the trees, uh, the wind blowing in the trees, uh, and just sat there for a minute, two minutes, five minutes. That's meditating. You have med been meditating. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, how do I want to say this? Uh, it's just, we, you, we do it. Jack, I lost track of the question because my mind went somewhere else. Oh, that's okay. So <laughs> some people think when we meditate that our mind needs to be clear. Is that, uh, okay. is that the case or? No, because uh, that's almost impossible. We have, we have a, our brain is a monkey brain and our brain likes to go. It likes to think. It likes to keep going all the time. Uh, so part of learning as you begin to meditate is to accept that that you could be, have meditate for 20 years and you're still gonna have those thoughts come to your mind while you're meditating. And it's, it's a process of letting those thoughts come, be aware of those thoughts, acknowledge those thoughts and let them go and go back to whatever your meditation is about. You, maybe your meditation is about focusing on a certain word or a certain concept, or maybe it's focusing on a candle or some other image that you just go back to wherever the focus is of your meditation. But uh, your brain is not going to just give up. Uh, it's going to keep working. And it's like uh, sometimes when we're having our uh, meeting at, at Jocelyn and we're in a room and we're meditating and it's very quiet, uh, but in another room, they may be setting up, getting ready for a ukulele because uh, life goes on. The rest of the world is not gonna stop because we're meditating uh, and you accept that. Yeah, it's the ukuleles, uh-huh. Acknowledge it, be aware of it and let it go. And we go back to whatever it is we're focusing on that meditation. So, so what are some of the benefits of meditation? Um, how does it help someone? What's the purpose of it? Okay. Uh, we live in a very busy, crazy world. Uh, one of the first things that we get out of meditation is letting go of that craziness, letting go of that tension, letting go of that stress, and just letting our bodies 
and mind relax. That's the first big thing that meditation gives us is that letting go of the stress of our everyday life. As we meditate uh, over time, uh, and it becomes more regular for us. Uh, one of the things about meditation is if you're going to do it, uh, you have to set your intention. I am going to meditate uh, every day for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever your intention is. And you're going to find the time uh, during the day that works for you. Could be morning, noon, night, whatever works for you. And you set that intention that I'm gonna do it every day. And as time goes by uh, and your meditation becomes deeper and deeper uh, and it begins to help steady your mind, helps you to focus on more positive qualities, loving kindness, uh, love, generosity, compassion. You start to more focus on those things in your life. Uh, you, you, it helps you to cultivate better qualities about yourself, who you are, what type of person you are. And if you're a master meditator, I am certainly not, uh, but you reach the point of your, your consciousness is aware of the oneness of our world, the connection that we have to everything and everybody in this world. Uh, Back when I was learning to meditate, uh, I watched this film one time. This was a man, obviously a master meditator, who was put in a box and dropped in a pool of water and left there for 10 minutes. And through his ability to meditate, he could just literally shut his body down so that his heartbeat was very, very low. He did not have to breathe a lot of air and he could stay there for 10 minutes uh, and be okay. Uh, and that's being, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know personally anybody that's reached that level and I don't think I'll ever reach that level, but <laughs> it's, it's nice to know. Well, I know for, you know, I, I do meditation from time to time, not, not, probably as frequently as I would like, but I noticed, you know, it does, it's relaxation, heartbeat slows down, um, and it's a way just to try and clear the mind and, and get rid of some of that clutter that's in there. Yeah. Um, and just to be in the moment for, for that 10 minutes or so. Yes, yes, it, it, it's just, yes, being in that moment, I like that, being in the moment, for that period of time, whatever it is for you. There's no rules about it. it's going to be this length. It's what works for you. So we, we talked a little bit earlier about there's no right position you can sit or lay or walk, walk. even <laughs> yes. uh, when you meditate. That one I'm kind of curious about. But also there are different kind of styles of med meditation with music or mm -hmm. guided imagery. Can you talk about those for a minute? Sure. Uh, when I'm doing uh, the uh, class at Jocelyn, I try to do different types of uh, mindfulness or of uh, work, meditation. And one time we may do music. You, there's a certain type of music you can find. It's called meditation music. Uh, there's different types, but it's very soothing. Uh, one of the ones I like to listen to, it does have uh, sounds from a monastery of the brothers kind of just humming a prayer, uh, but you focus on that music uh, as you're meditating, and that's the focus of your meditation, just hearing that those sounds, that vibration, uh, or you could focus on a candle uh, that uh, you're just going to watch that flame, see that flame. If there's no real candle, just in your mind to see that flame. And when those intrusive things happen, you acknowledge, be aware, go back to the flame. Could be a word that you focus on. Uh, or it's a word that has to not have any uh, big emotional impact to you. Uh, 
uh, kind of a neutral sounding word. Uh, the guided imagery is uh, one I really enjoy. Uh, we did one a couple of weeks ago. We went on a very nice walk through a meadow into the woods to a stream and then out of the woods back to the stack of the meadow. Uh, I think we did it for about 35 minutes. Uh, and it was interesting while we were in the woods looking at the trees and, and feeling the, the life of the trees and the power of the trees. Uh, there was some ukulele playing in the background from another room. And uh, I said to the, to the group, I maybe the angels are maybe uh, warming up or playing their harps uh, through the trees or something. Maybe you can hear them. And it just made it okay that this was music uh, in our surroundings. And maybe it was from angels, maybe it wasn't, uh, but it was a way of acknowledging it, being aware of it, letting it go and back to wherever we were in our meditation. Uh, well, when we started this, we promised our listeners and viewers um, that you would give us a brief demonstration of how to meditate. So okay. um, for a minute or so, if you All right. get us started. Sure, let's do that. So when I start my meditations, I always ring the gong, a one-time ring to bring us to meditation. So if you just let your eyes Kind of close if you're comfortable with that. Make sure your feet are on the ground. You're in your comfortable position. And just become aware of your breath. That life-giving force of breath. Be aware of it coming in through your nose. Feeling it coming in. And then be aware of it leaving, going back out. And just for a minute, let's just be aware of that, of our breath. Breath coming in and our breath going out. And if we were new to meditation, we might have some thoughts coming now. I, I've got to go shopping after this. I, I've got to get this done. And those thoughts are normal and that's okay. We're going to acknowledge, uh, yeah, I will have to do that. That's true. Let me go back to focusing on my breathing. My breath coming in. I can feel it. I feel it coming through my nose, down my throat, into my lungs into my tummy, and now I feel it going back out, the same route, up through my throat, out through my mouth, and then the next breath is gonna come in. And I'm just gonna focus on that, being aware of my breath, knowing that my breath gives me life. We don't think about that in our everyday life. But here in this meditation, we can be aware of the life force. We're breathing in and breathing out. And if we were just doing a breathing meditation, we could do that for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But this is just to give you an example of just that focus on the breath coming in and the breath coming out. Just 15 seconds of silence and just let yourself focus on your breath. Okay, that's great. And now I'm going to ring the gong three, 
three times, and that will help us come to the conclusion of this meditation. And as we let this meditation go, we slowly open our eyes. And if you need to, you can take a little stretch uh, and just be back here with Jack and I uh, in our talk. Well, that was great. Even for that short period of time, it was, I could feel the relaxation. So you mentioned your class here at the Jocelyn. Um, tell us a little bit about that and how yeah. people can attend. Yeah, we meet every other Tuesday, uh, and uh, it's open. You don't have to sign up. You just have to be here uh, at 1030 every other Tuesday. The next uh, meeting is uh, next Tuesday, uh, and everybody is welcome, whether you are a meditator or a non-meditator. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, we have a... Two of our people just uh, left to go back to Illinois, uh, who had been joining us uh, all winter long, but there's snowbirds going back and we will miss them. Uh, but please uh, stop in and try it. Uh, see what it's like. Uh, we, we, you, I think, will enjoy it. Well, I want to thank you, Glendon, for uh, spending this time with us, giving us that demonstration uh, about meditation. I know that I do it and it certainly helps. I'll let you in on a secret. I mostly do music meditation, ah, yeah. um, but I don't use what most people think of meditation music. I, it's orchestral. It's yeah, kind of loud, but for me, it just fills my brain. That's what helps fill my and clear my brain is I'm listening to the music and that's. Yes. And that's what works. It works for you. And that's what's yeah. important. That's what's important. Well, again, I want to thank you. Uh, thank our uh, viewers uh, and wish you all a very happy weekend. And we will see you next Friday. Thank you, Glendon. Thank you, Jack. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.